is up guys EJ here back with another video and today it's gonna to be something a little bit different uh, my top 10 films of uh, 2015 so uh, yeah last week I uh, completed my uh, wish list for uh, 2015 films and obviously this isn't really a time that you do a top 10 list for a year that's a year and a half old uh, but yeah my top 10 films of uh, 2015 uh, now, usually when I've done these top 10 lists in the past, uh, I put annotations uh, up in the uh, top left corner, sort of uh, with the number and the film and my rating. Uh, but it's come to my attention that YouTube uh, doesn't let you do uh, annotations anymore because apparently they're out of date uh, and people can't see them on mobile devices, etc. Uh, so I won't be able to do that, but I will put a list in the uh, description box. Uh, my full list uh, with my ratings uh, for each of the films I'm going to talk about in this uh, top 10. So uh, let's get started. So uh, out of order here. Up uh, first at number 10 uh, we have uh, The Danish Girl uh, directed by uh, Tom Hooper. Of course starring uh, Eddie Redmayne and Alicia Vikander. Um, yeah, great film about a, a Danish uh, married couple who are both painters. Um, uh, Redmayne plays Einar Wegener, um, a well-respected painter, and his uh, wife uh, is played by Alicia Vikander uh, Gerder. Um, yeah, one day is a joke. Uh, she doesn't have a, a model to paint, so she gets him uh, to dress up as a woman. Um, but as the film moves on, he sort of slowly um, becomes obsessed with this uh, female persona. Uh, that he's taken on uh, Lily Elb uh, and eventually would become a uh, pioneer for the uh, trans, uh, transgender community. Um, yeah, great performances by uh, uh, Eddie Redmayne and Alicia Vikander who of course won uh, Best Supporting Actress for her performance. Uh, really good film, good costumes, great looking movie. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't think I would to be honest. Not really my uh, cup of tea. Uh, so to say, uh, other people in the film include uh, Ben Wishaw and uh, Amber Heard. I always like her. Uh, yeah, the Danish Girl was a big surprise to me, and that's why it's in my uh, top ten of uh, 2015 at number ten. All right, moving on to number nine. Up next, we have uh, Steve Jobs, uh, directed by Danny Boyle and uh, written by uh, Aaron Sorkin. Yeah, a great film, of course, about uh, the enig enigmatic. Um, founder and CEO of Apple, uh, Steve Jobs, played by Michael Fassbender. Brilliant performance by him. Sort of takes place um, around uh, three iconic uh, product uh, launches, all with uh, varying degrees of success. And he has to deal with his uh, his estranged wife and his uh, young daughter that he doesn't really know about. Um, yeah, Kate Winslet, fantastic uh, as uh, Steve Jobs. Um, personal assistant, if you like. Um, Jeff Daniels really good as well. Seth Rogen is uh, Steve Wozniak. Um, yeah, really good film. Uh, Michael Stuhlbarg as well, another good actor. Uh, Steve Jobs, terrific performance by um, Michael Fassbender and especially Kate Winslet. Um, I, I really enjoyed it and it's uh, number nine on my list. All right, guys, moving on uh, to number eight. Up next, we have uh, Trumbo, uh, directed by Jay Roach. Uh, yeah, I love films about old Hollywood, and this is a great movie uh, starring uh, Brian Cranston as a uh, Hollywood screenwriter, uh, Dalton Trumbo, who, of course, was uh, blacklisted uh, in the 1940s, um, along with uh, his other colleagues. Really terrific performance by Brian Cranston. A uh, great film about the Hollywood um, blacklist, and of course, a very dark period uh, for uh, for Hollywood at the time. Um, yeah, terrific supporting cast: uh, Helen Mirren as uh, Hedda Hopper, uh, the gossip columnist; uh, Diane Lane, Diane Lane as his wife; uh, Elle Fanning plays his daughter. Uh, you've got good appearances by uh, Louis C.K., uh, John Goodman, and Michael Stuhlbarg again. Um, yeah, Trumbo, really terrific film, led by a great performance by uh, Brian Cranston uh, as Dalton Trumbo at number eight. 
All right, moving on to uh, number seven. We have uh, The Big Short. Um, yeah, terrific film, of course, about the uh, housing collapse and financial crisis in 2008. A bunch of uh, guys, uh, investment brokers, sort of foresee it coming and bet against the banks. Um, yeah, terrific uh, performances by uh, Christian Bale, uh, Steve Carell, Brad Pitt, uh, Ryan Gosling. Just a great cast. Um, again, don't really completely understand it because <laughs> uh, I'm not really uh, into uh, stocks and the housing market and all that kind of stuff. There's a yeah great moment where uh, <laughs> a, a naked Margot Robbie sits in a uh, hot tub uh, sipping uh, champagne and she explains how it works uh, in uh, layman's terms. Um, but yeah, The Big Short, really great film, great script and a terrific cast and number seven on my list alright guys moving on to uh, number six uh, we have uh, Spotlight uh, directed by uh, Tom McCarthy of course the Academy Award winner uh, for Best Picture for 2015 yeah great film with a terrific cast uh, Michael Keaton uh, Mark Ruffalo Rachel McAdams uh, Liev Schreiber uh, Stanley Tucci who I've always been a big fan of um, yeah, terrific film about the uh, Boston Globe's investigation into uh, child abuse uh, within the uh, Catholic Church uh, and the Archdiocese uh, in, Bos in the Boston area. Um, yeah, a groundbreaking investigation uncovered a, a huge uh, conspiracy and cover-up, of course. Um, yeah, terrific uh, writing, great script, uh, great performances, especially uh, Mark Ruffalo, who I've never been a huge fan of. Uh, but he's appeared in some terrific films, and he really sort of drives uh, this film. If you ask me, uh, Rachel McAdams, terrific as well, along with uh, Michael Keaton and uh, Liev Schreiber. Uh, so that is uh, Spotlight at number six. All right, number five, the big one, of course, why I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, we have uh, Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens. Of course, J.J. Uh, Abrams took over the helm, thank God from uh, George Lucas and uh, really brought back the uh, the magic that is Star Wars the, from uh, especially from the original trilogy of course um, yeah great story I loved how it was told from the perspective of uh, not a uh, stormtrooper per se but a uh, a guy who doesn't want to be part of uh, uh, the First Order uh, terrific uh, newcomers in the cast: Daisy Ridley, fantastic as Ray, um, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, um, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren, and then of course you have the return of uh, old favorites: Harrison Ford and Chewbacca. Um, Carrie Fisher, Sally, of course, uh, passed away last year, and uh, Mark Hamill makes a great appearance at the end as uh, Luke Skywalker. Just great action, great emotion, um, just great use of, uh, of the force in this film. Um, the bowcaster, Chewie's bowcaster, got a lot of play. Um, and sort of the heart of uh, Star Wars, if you ask me, is the Millennium Falcon. And of course, when that makes its initial appearance, just uh, the crowd just cheered. And it was such a... I, 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 I was in tears through most of this film, especially when Han and Chewie first show up on the screen and then of course what happens to uh, Han Solo at the end of the film heartbreaking as well um, yes the whole uh, star killer uh, planet um, idea uh, is a bit tired in the Star Wars universe but I liked how they did it I, I liked the variation how it can destroy like a whole galaxy whole solar system of planets if you like um, yeah, Star Wars The Force Awakens was just fantastic. This is the Star Wars film we had been waiting for uh, for so many years. Um, so many great shots. Like It just looked like a proper Star Wars film. It looked real. It looked like a place that had been lived in. Um, the wars had been fought. It wasn't all CGI. Um, and I really appreciated that about this film a lot. Um, yeah, this was this was the film we wanted, as opposed to the uh, prequel trilogy that we got um, 10, 15 years ago now. Um, but yeah, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, fantastic film, uh, absolutely loved it. And number five on my list. All right, guys. So uh, number five, 
uh, was definitely not a surprise to be on my list, but number four might be a surprise to some of you. Um, and it is uh, Tomorrowland, uh, yeah, a film that didn't do very well and was kind of panned uh, by critics. But I absolutely love this movie, uh, directed by uh, Brad Bird and uh, starring uh, George Clooney. Uh, yeah, George Clooney plays a, uh, a young, well, a younger version of him plays a young, uh, wide-eyed kid who dreams of becoming a scientist. Uh, and then through uh, some sort of magic, he finds himself uh, transported to this wonderful world uh, called Tomorrowland where invention and opportunity and uh, imagination uh, are abound. Um, I really enjoyed the sort of energy of this film. Uh, I loved the performances by uh, George Clooney and uh, Britt Roberts, uh, Robertson who goes along for the ride with him and uh, the young girl who plays Athena, um, Rafi Cassidy, I thought was terrific. Um, she steals the movie, if you ask me. Um, I love films about uh, the dare to be different, and this film certainly was different. Uh, Hugh Laurie, terrific as well. Um, I, I don't really understand why I did so poorly, but I thought Tomorrow Tomorrowland was fantastic. I loved it. Um, George Clooney, always great. Uh, so that is Tomorrowland at number four. Alright, moving on to uh, number three, we have uh, Bridge of Spies, uh, directed of course by Steven Spielberg. Fantastic uh, Cold War era uh, thriller, um, yeah, starring uh, Tom Hanks, always fantastic. Uh, he plays a Brooklyn lawyer who gets uh, tasked by the CIA uh, to go to uh, Berlin, um, uh, East Germany in fact. Um, and negotiate the release of a, uh, a uh, American pilot and uh, he brings along for the ride uh, Mark Rylance's character of course a suspected uh, Russian spy uh, Mark Rylance doesn't say much in the film but he won a Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor um, yeah you've got uh, other great people in the film like uh, Alan Alda um, Tom Hanks always fantastic uh, beautiful looking shots of Berlin, um, just brilliantly recreated um, in this film. Just a great looking movie. Uh, Steven Spielberg, my favorite director of all time. Uh, Bridge of Spies at number three. Alright guys, moving on to the final two. At number two we have uh, The Martian, uh, directed by Ridley Scott, um, starring uh, Matt Damon of course. A uh, fantastic movie. I absolutely loved this film. Um, it was nominated for uh, Best uh, Comedy in the Comedy category at the Golden Globes. It does have comedy in the film, but it's certainly not a comedy. Uh, but it's got a great spirit uh, and fun about it. Uh, Matt Damon gives a fantastic performance as a astronaut who uh, is part of a manned mission to Mars. Uh, and he uh, gets left, his, left behind on Mars, presumed dead after uh, sort of complications I think uh, during a storm uh, his crew leaves him behind thinking he's dead and of course he has to figure out a way to survive and uh, contact uh, NASA and Earth uh, let him know that he's alive uh, fantastic performance like I said by Matt Damon I love movies about sort of guys who get stranded uh, films like Castaway uh, come to mind especially um, yeah, and the fantastic supporting cast. I loved all the stuff that went on at NASA uh, in the attempt to try and bring him back. Uh, Jeff Daniels, terrific. Um, Jessica Chastain, Michael Pena, uh, Kristen Wiig, Sean Bean, uh, Chiwetel Ojefor. Um Yeah, just a fantastic spirit to this movie. And this is the film that sort of, um, sort of represents what I think uh, the space pr program and NASA should be all about because what we actually have in NASA and the space program is practically dead, if you ask me. I mean, we send up uh, rovers and uh, and um, satellites to observe planets, uh, but beyond that, um, there isn't really much going on as far as space exploration. And it's one one uh, um, subject that I'm fascinated by, and it's something I think we should continue to pursue as much as possible and and the Martian sort of uh, embodies that spirit if you ask me uh, Mars has never looked better on film just fantastic looking movie 
uh, Ridley Scott, one of my favorite directors. Uh, just a great film. I actually loved it from start to finish. Uh, the Martian at number two. Last but not least, number one, we have, uh, in my opinion, the best film of the year, and that is, of course, uh, The Revenant, uh, directed by Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu, uh, who won Best Director for this film. Fantastic looking movie, of course. Um, Leo DiCaprio, of course, winner for Best Actor for his brilliant performance as uh, Hugh Glass. The uh, film takes place um, uh, during a fur expedition. Um, he's uh, sort of guiding them and uh, he suffers hor horrendous injuries from a bear attack uh, and he gets left for dead uh, by one of his fellow uh, party members. Uh, great performance by Tom Hardy. Um, Domhnall uh, Gleeson, really good in the film as well, who also starred in uh, Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens. I forgot to mention that. Um, yeah, just a great looking film, the cinematography, the costumes. Uh, and this film really blew me away with three three scenes in particular. Uh, the opening scene with the raid on the camp, then of course the bear attack sequence. Uh, viscerally one of the most amazing scenes I've seen in a long time and it was for me the most memorable and powerful moment in, in any movie from uh, 2015 and the, the fight scene um, at the end between Leo and Tom Hardy is just so so uh, brutal and intense and sort of um uh what's the word i'm trying to think of uh yeah it just embody what it means to uh to fight for your life and uh sort of um fight for survival that kind of stuff um yeah the the fight scene at the end between the two of them was just fantastic in the snow um, yeah, great looking film, absolutely loved it, The Revenant, um, brilliant in my opinion, I think it should have won Best Picture, um, I was kind of disappointed it didn't, uh, but that is my list, uh, The Revenant at number one, so uh, yeah, that is my top ten films of uh, 2015, all on Blu-ray, All I got, got all my uh, films from uh, 2015, uh, just finished my wish list, uh, a week or so ago so yeah thank you for watching as always and until next time I'll see ya bomb James bomb